Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Our interest lies in finding that damned book and thwarting a vile beast of a man who shall not rest until God himself is thrown down and all of creation becomes Satan's black hell besmeared farting hole. That was... Yes, yeah, it's episode 181. Fart. She did. <laughs> episode 181 recorded May 12th, 2021. <laughs> Some magazine. Yeah, that was I am your host. Why is that? Oh, because it's old language. Or <laughs> hell, the smeared, farting hole, farting hole. That's oh, going into my vocabulary. Yeah. There's a, there's a um, Taco Bell joke in there. Somewhere. Well, I can't believe Chad didn't have like <laughs> farting sounds on tap. Like that would have been hilarious, actually. Yeah, he did, well, but he muted it. I promise you that. I promise to next time. <laughs> All right. I'm your host, Jeff Moore. This podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Sometimes we get a little loose around that. Each episode, my co host Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic or not so classic film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Joining me tonight is Crystal Cleveland. The Living Dead Girl and co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. How are you, Crystal? I'm fabulous. I mean, it is my pick, and you know, I mean, it's Julian Sands, so you know, it's good times. Good times. And it's almost yeah. as good as a fog machine. Right? Oh, mm, I don't know. A good fog machine. <laughs> 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 I have a problem. Also joining us is Chad Hunt. <laughs> Comic book artist and co-host decades before the classic era and decades before the 1970s. Oh, and I, well, I'll come back to that. Uh, how you doing, Chad? I'm, I'm good. Sorry. I'm good. I was just disappointed I didn't get to see the devil's farting butthole or whatever that was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hell be smeared, even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they usually is after a good. good I think they got special. Uh, oh wow! Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah this... And last but not least is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, and special effects guru, and co-host of decades before the nineteen seventies. An all around nice guy. How you doing, Bill? I'm fine. It looks yeah. like we're already going off the rails and yeah, and barely got. I, I think I think we've become too Are familiar with each other yeah. because we all just go. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there was there was a time when we were like, "Excuse me, hell be smirched farting holes." There's a lady present, but you know. Nah, <laughs> oh Chris, yeah, I forgot. Crystal, yeah, the Crystal knows yeah. what that's all about. Yeah, uh, and I, I, I forgot to bring this up, Crystal. But did you want to mention uh, uh, what happened with your movie that you directed? Oh, that I got best horror from Hollywood yeah. Blood Horror. Yeah. Yes. Yay. Yes. So, oh, so she is now uh, award-winning award director. Yes, award-winning yeah, filmmaker. filmmaker. Yep. yep. Writer. That's she and Christopher Moore can uh, award-winning filmmaker sound. Christopher Moore can well, do that. He's it a multiple award-winning filmmaker, mm -hmm. so I'm not a multiple. Yeah, so yeah. he can't it rest easy it. now that he feels your hot breath on the back <laughs> of his neck. At, you know, running that marathon. Okay. Oh, oh my God! I'm so far right. behind him, but yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That was a big yeah. time. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, that's an excellent. And the name of the short is, I'm not sure anybody else. The called. Mating Dance. The, yeah, mating the Dance. Mating Dance. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not going to be online at least anytime soon. So okay. it'll only be at film festivals for, I so, mean, for at least probably, at least the next six to eight months. Just want to say, I am in the title role. So, you know. Yeah, I, that's true. Bill, that's is, absolutely Bill true. is the Mating Dance. I am Lord of the Mating yeah. Dance. <laughs> oh my Lord of the Dance. Oh Lord. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh Lord, oh That's Lord. That's actually okay. so fun. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh God, what? now she's thinking. <laughs> yeah. You can see the wheels. On, on this turning. podcast, we uh, usually start oh, hold on, hold on, details. Hold on. You can, I can what? see the poster now. Bill Mulligan is the Mating Dance. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll huh? put butts in seats. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it will. 
<laughs> mating dance two. Mating dance the dance warriors. Yeah. Electric <laughs> boogaloo. <laughs> Electric. Why are you? Uh oh. Jeff, right. you're really control control of this nightmare. So this I'm, is I'm what going off the rails I'm, feels like. This <laughs> podcast, uh, we start out by giving some basic details about the film, and we follow that up with our first impressions, and then just kind of wander our way through oh, the rest. Yeah. Hopefully, relating to the film. So but our film this episode is. Warlock. Hey, what? hey, wait, 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 what is that? Whoa, 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 whoa. There has oh, been a, a yeah. tragic error here. What? This is a great uh, cast. I mean, it's Wallace a hell of a Ford cast. Oh, wow. So he decided, he decided to tease Idol. me. So you're, come on. He, <laughs> once again, Jeff goes into business for himself. Richard <laughs> Whitmark sucked in this movie. <laughs> he did. He did. But Richard Ireland is in this from Island of Lost Souls. Uh, Whit Bissell from yeah. Creature from the Black Lagoon, Invasion of Bike Snatchers, et cetera, et cetera. All right, now De I'm done. And, Delor and Dolores Michael <laughs> with, a, with a very unconvincing old age makeup. So, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. oh my God. Malone, <laughs> Dorothy Malone. No. I, Dorothy is it Malone over? I I uh, so, um, every time I searched Warlock, this came up first for some yeah. reason. I, I, I don't know why. Maybe it was Henry Fonda. Yeah. Uh, you know, anyway. there, are, there are actual fans of this movie that are now throwing things at their monitors. Yeah. I don't <laughs> Angry um, I, I can always cut that if I decide to. But uh, oh, no, our, topic, no. our topic this episode is Warlock, which was released in 1989 or 1990 or 1991, depending where Take you were. Uh, directed That's by weird, Steve Miner. Well, yeah. So it's uh, it's uh, it was released in the U.S. on January eleventh, nineteen ninety one, and it, uh -huh. but it was first released in uh, Australia and the uh, United Kingdom on June first and second, respectfully, nineteen eighty nine, and then I'll, every place around the world almost before it got to the U.S. Hmm. And there's a reason for that. Oh, that's interesting. I can't wait to hear yeah, it. Let's 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 talk about that right this minute. It's like we run into this every time we do a late eighties picture. Mm -hmm. Because New World. Oh yeah. That went bankrupt. And a lot of films and, were left orphaned. Yeah. So this was actually released in the US by Trimark. Trimark bought it, even though it was a New World mm -hmm. picture. All right. Directed by Steve Miner, writers. Is uh, David, is it Tui? Tui, yeah. Tui. 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 Cast includes Julian Sands, Lori Singer, Richard E. Grant, Mary Waranov. Mm -hmm. uh, production company was New World Pictures, which we just mentioned. Filming locations was like everywhere you can think of. Boston, Plymouth, Massachusetts, in Hollywood, <laughs> Santa Paula, California City in California. Uh, and the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. Filming dates, we have a start date of February 3rd, 1988. I don't know, maybe it was never finished. <laughs> it wasn't listed anyway. And we have some, uh, we're a little befuddled about the budget too, because $7 million estimated in IMDb. Wikipedia says $15 million and is quoting a Cinefantastic article. Hmm. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, I would say seven. Gross. Come on. Uh, it doesn't. Well, when they talked about what they had to do for the effects, it, it's hard to believe it was fifteen million. But yeah, yeah. Was, uh, domestic gross opening weekend in the U.S. was seven hundred eighty thousand. Gross in the U.S. was nine million. And uh, a brief synopsis: a warlock flees from the seventeenth to the twentieth century with a witch hunter in hot pursuit so goth terminator <laughs> so give me yeah. a sandwich and but, a dr pepper i'm in a gd hurt. but but it also makes like well i mean the reverse still with the future and the but it makes way less sense okay. <sighs> um all right 
I got a longer synopsis, but I'm skipping it. And there's okay. really like, I don't think there's any uh, alt alternate titles. I think it's just like Warlock everywhere. That's a great title. Um, Makes sense. So, um, and now, Tag. Chad, we have a, two taglines, which are both on the poster. Oh. Uh, uh, the devil has one son or something. The devil also has one yeah. son. Ugh. Mm. That's pretty. Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> He's come from the past to destroy the future. Okay, that's fine. That's yeah. <laughs> that's even better when Arnold reads it. Yeah. <laughs> Satan has one son. He, he isn't really the son of Satan. So he well, that's what he said. He said if. If you do my bidding, then you will be my son, my only yeah. son, or something like that. Yeah, so like he'll, he'll be adopted. It's like, okay, thanks, so man. that explains how he was brought back because we know that Satan brought him back. How did the other dude come back? He went through the the mystical portal of Banish. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I thought that Satan, Satan also Satan has one son. By, is, is the other thing, even though yeah. Like Satan a made a portal so he could escape from the prison and um, send him to the future because. And know. he went through it and he managed to come through too. So yeah, Satan has yeah, like no real control. Uh, you know. Okay, so let's listen. let's do first impressions, and, <laughs> and Crystal can tell us how uh, Richard Grant got to Back to the Future. He did not. It have doesn't make any so sense I, to I me. Okay. Satan's in a big glass jar in a church. So, what are your first it's impressions impression. of this, Crystal? Because I know you saw this back in the day. Oh yeah, I told. So I, I love Julian fans. Like, oh my god, I don't know. I just remember watching this as a kid and just watching it for him. He was the whole reason I watched this movie. Just for him, him alone. Nothing else mattered. Yep. Okay. So, so what you're, so what you're saying <laughs> is that, okay, yeah, you, you find him attractive, I think, is, is if I'm reading between the lines here. And he still looks that good. He totally does. And he looks even better in person. He's a lot, he's a lot taller than I thought he would be. Like in you real met life. him at a convention? Yeah, a few times, actually. Okay. He's really nice. He looks really good. He must live a really healthy lifestyle. Because, like, I think so he's anyway. like... You know, um, but yeah, so I saw this movie when I was younger and I just remember being in love with Julian and also I loved horror and the the whole warlock thing is kind of awesome, you know, because most of the time back in the eighties, it was mainly, you know, I mean, they had a lot of female witches, not as many yeah. male witches. It's a little different take on it. And it's a different take, I guess, on like a Damien Tort type thing too. I guess they're trying to combine it all into one. And I bought it. I didn't care. I remember I really enjoyed it. I found it very entertaining then. And honestly, this time, uh, other than that horrible, like, I <laughs> like Lori Singer. Oh, my yeah. God. How they, like, literally, like, grade her hair a little bit. She's like, I'm 40 now. Oh, my God. That was funny and ridiculous. Totally um, her fault. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that. But... I mean, I still kind of, I still enjoyed it. I still had fun with it. I, I did laugh at points, quite a few points. <laughs> but some of it I looked at and I was like, you know, that's not bad. That's really not that bad, that, how they did that. And that's, you know, I didn't mind the acting. I thought it was okay. I mean, he was pretty, pretty vile. I don't remember him being quite so mean, but I guess... I was charmed because I was like, damn, he really killed that kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's messed up. But so, yeah, I, st <laughs> I still enjoyed it. I mean, I forgot a lot about the story. So, yeah, that goes to show you how probably distracted I was as a kid, you know, <laughs> just kind of half watching it. Like, he's so handsome. And then. Okay. He's so handsome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mr. Chad, huh? we'll just go down the line here. When did you first see this? And, uh... <laughs> Are you talking to Tad again? Yeah, Tad's here. <laughs> um, 
first of all, Julian Sands is an asshole in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, I, well, I saw this. I saw this. I rented it. Actually. Be smart. And uh, I actually, I really like this movie. I just, mm -hmm. I, I wish, I love the story, and now it switches it from a female witch to a warlock, and and um, I, it it just suffers from a few things. One one being Laurie Singer's terrible acting. <laughs> Um, I didn't like her character at all. It's just she's just mm, yeah, and, not, and uh, just a selfish, out for herself kind of. And, and she really didn't stretch much farther than that. You know, uh, they tried to uh, make her a little more sympathetic by the end, but by the end, you're like she's she's an asshole too. Mm. But but um, I liked it. I like this movie. I love the makeup effects. It, it and another thing it suffers from is from visual. The visual effects weren't that great, mm -hmm. and and every time I watch it, it, I just feel like it could be so much better with 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 uh, better visual effects and 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 that kind of thing. You know, everybody everybody else I had no problem. Julian Sands is awesome. Um, Stephen Grant is awesome. Mm -hmm. Even a lot of the other side characters who are acting in this um, are really, really good. Um, but just, you know, you, you can only, when the little flame comes out of his really? hands and stuff like that, yeah. you're yeah. really you're really rooting for something better visually to happen in the, in the magic scenes. And, and uh, the sky turning cloudy was pretty much a trope from yeah, magic things back then, but 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 all that all that aside, I really like watching this movie. It, it's um, and I guess it's the story really that I like, and and them chasing the MacGuffin, the the the, the three parts of the satanic Bible or whatever it was, and and um, and I still enjoy watching it. I, I really I think it's a good movie that could be. A little better if they'd have had more, a, a little more money to to do it, and um, and I know that they uh, they did a second one, which I don't think I've ever seen. But uh, oh, um, there's three. The and oh, Julian the is, Julian is yeah. in the second one, but he's not in the third. In the third, it's I think it's Andrew, the guy who played. I think it was the guy from Witchboard. Hmm. Yeah, but there's three. Okay, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen any, of <laughs> but, but yeah, I, this is one I really like. I really like it. And people talk about guilty pleasures. I don't believe in guilty pleasures because I think if you like something, you like it, you shouldn't feel guilty yep. about it. But uh, this is one that I've heard people say, oh, that's one of my guilty pleasures. But I don't look at it that way. It, it's a movie that I really enjoy watching and the characters are good. And uh, I really, really dig the story. And I wish, I just wish they would have had a little more oomph behind them to, mm -hmm. to, to tell the story a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, Richard Grant was who you were talking about. Right? Did I say Richard? I probably already said Steven, didn't I? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Was, well, um, Bruce Payne played the warlock in the number three. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Bruce oh, okay. Payne. Okay. I don't know. Bill. <laughs> Uh, I was, I mean, uh, so, so, um, Crystal very deliberately lowered expectations for the film. Mm -hmm. right? And I kind of went in there. It's like, I've, I've, never, seen I've never seen the movie. Um, it's a franchise that, uh, it, it, most people don't seem to say very much about and everything. So I just sort of expected a late eighties cheese fest and yeah, the, the effects, the effects are pretty cheesy. Um, some some of them just don't work. So the budget was clearly they had a great ambition, and I think it was a missed opportunity because to tell you the truth, the stuff that was the most effective and entertaining were things that were simple. The nailing, using the nail in his yeah. footprints, oh yeah, yeah, was great. I love mythology. I love it when when mm -hmm. vampire movies like Captain Kronos and everything kind of play go beyond the garlic and silver and steaks and really get into oh if you do this and this and this this will happen. That's cool that these creatures mm -hmm. have all this power, but with power comes all these limitations and vulnerabilities that you know you you stab a nail into my footprint nothing happens. So no, I can't shoot <laughs> cartoon animation out of my fingers but i can walk without worrying about it. that was cool they should have done more of that because the cartoon stuff looked like tom and jerry 
and you could tell I, I read somewhere they filmed a lot of the special effects scenes without the special effects person there. Yeah. That's a mistake. Yeah. Ah. Never, ever yeah. do that because they would have said something like, okay, look, if he's doing this and flame is coming out, could we put some lighting on him to kind of make it look like there's something flickering when we, right. otherwise it's going to look really, really fake. Um, you right. won't believe a man can fly at all when you watch this one <laughs> but all that said, what, how was, did they do that did they put him on something though i mean what does anyone know how that was done i was really I, curious when i was watching it i was like I mean, oh. some of the scenes were were i guess green screen or something but that but mm -hmm. it wasn't great however mm -hmm. they did it because sometimes his size didn't seem right and the speed wasn't right it, it just well, it wasn't that good it was slow yeah um I don't know. but I was completely entertained by this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, thoroughly. I mean, I what Chad said, Laurie Singer was not a fun character. Um, she was the one that we should identify with because, you know, but we didn't because we didn't like her. And, and the actress, I think, really screwed the film over by refusing to, to do the age makeup that they had planned for. I thought this age makeup was some of the she, worst I'd ever seen. Wait, is and that she, why? Yeah. Oh. She turned up, they had prosthetics for her when she was 40, but she refused to wear them. So they basically just lightened her hair and, and put on foundation. Okay. And she didn't look at all. I mean, this is. I, yeah, you know, she I, had I Carl, Carl Fullerton doing the, uh, the age makeup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the Those, top guys. And why did she refuse? Does any, I mean, uh, when I, I don't, I know why she refused. I'm wondering why they didn't fire her on the spot yeah. because that's kind of a critical plot point. And mm -hmm. it, it totally took you out of it. She probably refused because I don't know how old she was when she made this movie, but 40 was probably not that far away. And she refused to, you know, wear something that would look genuinely old. I, I, you know, people can be pretty vain about things, but yeah. that's the plot of the movie. Okay. When they did 60, she allowed them to do a few things because they had to do something, but it just, it really age makeup is difficult at best and if yeah. you have somebody who's telling no you can't do this no you can't do that she did not look like she had aged she just looked like she'd woken up and forgot to put on her makeup yeah yeah so and but she's freaking out about it like you know she's acting like she looks incredibly old but we with eyes can see that she does not so it it, it kind of ruined the whole thing because that was a pretty effective thing Every day you age another twenty years. I mean, you do the math, and there's not too many days you got to dilly dally. Yeah, not too many days left. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, good stuff. And and I, if they had, if they really had a fifteen million dollar budget, they could have done what they probably needed to do. But I think the actual budget was yeah. closer to the seven. I and, agree. Yeah, uh, Julian Sands was good. His character was was entertaining. Uh, showed a few things here and there that w a little bit of depth scene with the uh, the uh, not priest I guess the reverend and his wife was actually pretty effective and showed mm -hmm. a little bit of you know uh, the fact that when he picked up the crucifix and put it back on the wall it was like oh okay that's that's cool that that degree of respect that he has for his adversary that he's not just twirling his mustache and everything yeah, I mean, he does kill that kid, though, so he is pretty oh, I took evil. It, I, I took it as arrogance and showing them that that wasn't going to stop him. That wasn't. So, uh, I, I could do it that way too. Yeah, I mean, you know the the fact that he, I, it was, it was. I, I just, I liked him. I, he was, he was very good in the role, and mm -hmm. you know, so yes, it is a missed opportunity. But I guess my expectations, you succeed in really setting my expectations low because I enjoyed <laughs> the film. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Oh, I'm yeah. so glad. Well, like, so when I saw Bill, I didn't know he had never seen this movie when I talked to him this weekend. And then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then when he said he hadn't seen it, I'm like, oh, oh, well, I mean, it was okay. It was okay. You know, I mean, mm. eh. and then Sean was like, yeah, you know, blah, 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 blah. All she like, would okay. ever say is how much she liked you. So I expected a movie was just going to be like this guy posing in a, uh, you know, <laughs> A speedo or something for an hour and a half. Like, oh, oh that is oh. totally not what I want to see. I totally, it's like, look, he's just dressed in all black. He's all covered. It's a, That's it's the a, best. It's a cool, it's a cool outfit. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's a good looking guy if you kind of like that Lucius Malfoy spike from the I, okay. uh, vibe. So, sure. so I don't like blondes. It's That's the weirdest thing. I am 
He's pretty blonde. I don't like blondes. I know. I know. And that's what's odd mm. about him. It's just, it's definitely specific to him for some reason. I think because he was in my, so many good horror movies in my child. You know, like, I loved Naked Lunch. I don't know. I'm a big weirdo. It's super gross. I get it. Like, people are like, what is wrong with you? I don't know. He's got Julian, uh, Julian Sands is the blondest blonde dude I have ever seen. Yeah, I he, know. Very blonde, I he'd be an albino. Practically, I don't know. It's weird. Maybe it was but the he, accent. Well, the yeah, he does have style, and chicks dig guys with style. Yeah, he. You know, yeah. Mm. And he is. He's really nice. He's a nice person. That's good real. to hear. That's nice. Yeah. To so I, I I saw this back in the I believe in the early nineties. I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure I rented a video because I don't think I would have seen this in the theater. But I worked with a woman who was like Crystal. She was like, oh, Julian Sands, oh, you got to get this a great movie, you know, so so I watch it, and I kind of remember sort of liking it, um, I, I, but I don't remember a whole lot about it, you know, I, I just kind of remember, yeah, Julian Sands, uh, so it was nice, it was kind of fun to watch it again, um, and I, you know, this is getting to be a trend here, but I was, I like Lori Singer. I'm not saying she was a good actress, but I, I like the idea of having this this serious, uh, you know, demon chaser from the 16th century pairing up with this sort of, uh, I don't know what you would call her. Valley yeah, girl? Valley. Yeah. Hip. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, so it did irritate me that they, when I read about stuff about the makeup, and apparently they had already, they had done the tests and everything. And it wasn't until they went to like do the first shoot with that makeup on, and she said, eh, "No," which you know, kind of isn't her. Uh, isn't her brother Mark Singer stuff. played Beastmaster? Oh, really? Is that her brother? I, I thought that. I don't know. Bueller. That's a good question. But Bueller? yeah, the the I have the no uh, idea. The uh, effects were obviously like animated stuff yeah. you know it was it just looked like things drawn on there i the uh the ray shooting out of his hands you know like the blast reminded me of bill talking about scratching the yeah the negative oh my god hey that. okay so her brother is mark singer and she was oh. born in the same city as me corpus christi texas that's interesting uh -huh. yeah so yeah cool there you go so mm -hmm. anyway um yeah, I enjoy it. And I liked Richard Grant a lot. I thought he was really good. His so over the top and so serious uh, playing that character really, I thought, sort of carried it. Um, let's take a look at some stuff here. Bill rounded up a few things. Um, posters. Yeah, there's just, you know. Not too many, but that, that's a pretty effective poster on the bottom. It's simple, spare. Yeah, yeah but I love it. It, it gives you, it gives what you what I you need, which is Julian Sand, which clearly is the selling point for an awful lot of fans of this film, and the shadow that looks like a demon against a white background. I mean, I, I, I kind of like that. I like the font, too. Design, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, the director is Steve Miner, and you've got a couple of other things that he's done here. He's done a few uh, things, Friday, I think, Friday 13th Part 2. Yep. Which might have been a better film, probably better loved than it is if they had not vengefully cut all the good stuff out of it. Mm -hmm. um, the ratings board basically was, was appalled that Friday the 13th Part 1 had done so well, so they, they took out their frustration on Part 2 and just disemboweled the film yeah well he's he should be well known to fans of horror i mean blake placid uh likes the halloween h2o uh, yeah. um house house yeah he, he's done he's mm -hmm. done a lot of stuff in, in the genre a lot of tv to um so yeah he's he's pretty well known in the horror I, genre you know now that I, now that i see his name again was he the one who was also going to do a godzilla Hmm. I, th I think so. Yeah. Yeah, there was an American Godzilla planned, yeah. and 
at some point they just they cut it because they thought the budget was too high it was ludicrously yeah. low it was and supposed to be a sure 3d that, film i think yeah that's too. yes 3d and i think it was going to have um oh yeah, some some really good people involved with it uh, uh fred decker was involved with it yeah William, bill it. stout bill stout that's right bill yeah. oh yeah uh, okay well it, apparently he was uh started out as um an editor for Wes Craven and Sean Cunningham yeah. on several yeah. different mm -hmm. films. Last House on the Left. Mm. Oh. Oh, my. I think he was like a production assistant or a production or assistant editor or something on that. I'm surprised more editors don't become directors because that seems like a natural progression. Yeah, if you're it does. An editor, to me, too. If you're, you're an editor, you, you learn, you know, God, I wish they'd shot this and I wish they'd given me this. So it would be an easy thing to become a director and know exactly yeah. what the editor is going to need to tell the story. He was a second unit director on uh, Fred Decker's Night of the Creeps as well. Oh, well, that's good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Thrill me. Yeah. Mm. So I thought he did a, he did a good job with this. I thought it was well directed. Um, yeah. You know, you know, but of course, you can be the best director in the world if if the budget isn't there for what you're trying to do. I thought they they did what they could, but. Well, and, and as far as uh, you know, first director, he was. This was what like his fourth or fifth. Oh no. Is that what I think it is? Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yes. what? What? He he directed Soul Man. Yeah. Oh did. Lord. Well, that oh. hasn't aged well. No, and we talked about that a little bit when we did. And I history. love Tommy, but oh. Yeah. Well, so you know, that it was, it was uh, a different Friday time. 30, part two and three, and House and uh, Soul Man, and then a few episodes of The Wonder Years, and then Warlock, and he did yeah. a lot of TV. I mean, Friday, you know, Friday the 13th, part three, when you think about it, is really the film that defined Jason as we know him. I mean, that's where we got the hockey mask and the sort of unstoppable mm -hmm. killer. Up to that point, the first movie, he's not even really in the movie. And the second mm -hmm. movie, he's just kind of a big guy with a potato sack on his head and, you know, just goes around, kills people, not a whole lot of style. It's the third movie that really, that's what everything has been launched from that. Mm-hmm. And it was in 3D well, with eyeballs coming right at the camera. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. I love that film. And I didn't realize that. It says he was the only one to direct more than one film in that series. Oh. Yeah, that's The true. only one. That's crazy. That is interesting. Hmm. I think he even worked on the first one in some capacity. I don't think he was a director on it, but uh, hmm. the first Friday the 13th. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. So his, his name um, probably deserves to get mentioned more than it does in terms of you know influencing horror well and, and the tv shows he's been involved in uh i mean not stuff that i watch but stuff that was uh had good ratings i think dawson creek you um yeah. what else was i seeing later on oh well, pretty wide variety of yeah. stuff i mean and that makes he's a good director yeah it's i don't know that he has a um a recognizable visual style that you would say, "Oh, that's a that must be a Steve Miner film." Right, right. And and mm -hmm. those are the kind of directors we gravitate towards that we can recognize. But there's a lot to be said for someone who does the film and doesn't necessarily feel obligated to leave his personal stamp on it. Just I... tells the story. So. Mm -hmm. And he's done some yep. stinkers like the Day of the Dead remake and. Mm -hmm. And a couple of those, but the when he hits, he hits. Like Lake Placid yeah. was a fun Lake monster Placid movie. Lake Placid is an absolutely fun movie. Yeah, yeah. great, great, great movie. And, and uh, so he's been involved with some really good, yeah. good films, genre. I'd, films. Sh I'd shake his hand at a convention yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Buy him a drink. Don't hold me to that, Mister Miner. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> the writer, Mister Tui. Which we, we don't have a, a, I, a. I meant to do one for him. He's, a graphic he's, on him, but wow. He's the pitch yeah. black guy. Yeah. Huh. The Fugitive, Terminal Velocity, Water World. Yeah. Well, okay. They can't oh. understand. <laughs> pitch Black. Yeah. Pitch Black. Yeah. Riddick. Chronicles of Riddick. I love Chronicles pitch black. of Riddick. 
I, there, I like that concept. There is a movie called Below from 2002 where these guys are trapped on a submarine um, that is just – I love that movie. It's a great movie if you guys can – if nobody's ever seen it and can figure mm. – but there's some, like, supernatural force after that. these guys that are trapped on a, a, a submarine, and, uh, and it, it's just a great, great movie. Below, mm. huh? It's called Below, and, yeah. And uh, Darren, well, that has, he's the director of that, and yeah, yeah. Dar- Darren Aronofsky was Darren there. Aronofsky wrote it, yeah. Wow. Bet, I'm surprised Bruce, that Bruce Greenwood, um, Bruce Greenwood I, I was that. in it, Zach Galifianakis, hmm. uh, and it's just, I'll check that out. It's that just, it's a, it's a really yeah, cool, absolutely. cool little film. To see if per- that's perfect crazy. getaway. That was a pretty cool, cool little thriller thriller movie um, with uh, what's her name from um, um, the Resident Evil uh, franchise. Mila. Yeah, uh, um, me and Joey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Steve Zahn. Steve Zahn and Timothy Olyphant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's well, a that really, good cast. Really cool little thriller there. It was really good. I'm writing this down. Oh, All right. <laughs> yeah. I will totally forget this. <laughs> Great, appreciate that, Chad. Yeah, um, thanks for the recommendation. I'll, I'll probably ask you, what was that film you recommended? All right. So we've already talked a bit about there he is. Sands. Um And there's the uh, thumb and looking big right toe. looking right at handcuffs. Crystal there with this smoldering good look. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like, I like those handcuffs. That that should have been silly, but it, it, it was you know cool. Because, again, here's this creature with all this power. And yet, as long as you catch him by his toe and, you know, for whatever reason, these are the rules and he's got to go by them. Well, all you got, it's any me, mighty mo. Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. Catch a warlock by his toe. Yeah. If you nail his footprint to the ground, let him go. Yeah. Or, or <laughs> his head, apparently, where his head yeah. hit the sand or something. Yeah. That, that right. cost him some pain, too. Um. So yeah, I I was wondering about that those <laughs> handcuffs because or, or thumb cuffs because I was thinking does that mean he can't do his I don't know maybe maybe Th- those I, that I was know. an actual torture from the hard. time uh, that that was one of the one of their favorite tortures yeah. was to to thumb kind screws. of have you it yeah well screws. also but also to to make you bent where you had to have this unnatural position you couldn't right. sit right. you couldn't stand and it was just it was a pure torture these people put a lot of thought into torture because that's what entertainment was back then. There was no cable TV and, and, you know, just so their torturing was a lot of thinking went into the tortures. It's, it's, it's horrifying, but yeah. You know, I don't remember the, I don't remember the name of it, but probably that wasn't a decade ago, six or five or six years ago, I went to a traveling exhibit in uh, San Diego to museum and it was like torture devices of the oh, yeah. Spanish like they have the Iron Maidens sure. and oh my god stuff. but the it, there was all oh, there's stuff in there that you oh, don't see in the oh wait the Maidens Judas Priest <laughs> uh, like the, I, like I don't the remember what they're called thing. Uh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where they like dangle you? Oh, yeah, I love torture. I oh, totally I thought maybe. Well, there's there's a thing that creates that a hell of a smeared fart hole too. I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> pretty nasty. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what what podcast is this again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when the movie well, opens up and they got those guys walking, these pilgrims walking, all looking grim. I'm fully prepared to have my sympathies for whoever these these folks are torturing. But no, it turns out he richly deserves that and more. Well, we just did a uh, a Julian Sands film, Crystal. Oh yeah, the uh, Into the Dark one. Was that a year ago? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like a year ago. Yeah, and, year and I mentioned it then. Time flies about when it's a pandemic. I yeah. loved him. And he looks. See how good he looks. Good. Yeah. Nasty piece of work. Mm. That's it. Mm. He was fantastic. It was a Christmas that. one. <laughs> um, all right, Laurie Singer. No, oh, that's, wow! Oh, she's aged. Oh, there she is. <laughs> so I gotta ask: Is that was that like a, a hairdo that was in? in the- that, that just looked like a wig to me for some reason. Like just screamed wig. I it does. Know. It does seem like something from that era. You know, it's so bad. Um, MTV. You know, MTV would be full of uh, haircuts like that and everything. And I mean, 
Well, she's cute enough. It's just her character. I kind of liked her. I don't know. I just didn't like. I didn't like her character that much. I didn't. I didn't. You you can't make a character so self absorbed and and narcissistic through ninety percent of the movie and then try to redeem them at the well, very end. You can't. I think that it, it that was how she played it. Really, though, I think the character could be more sympathetic. I think it's all on who plays it. She came across as vapid, and that was the problem. Vapid and Sandra with a K. You know, it that's what did it. I think had she played it downplayed it a little bit and played it a little bit more straight and serious, I think we would have she would have been more likable. She goes, Yeah, she's oh, not I, she's not out to save the world. Be. She just wants to stop looking like, you know, she's yeah. old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean well, we went through like five minutes of her going, Maybe if I do my hair this way and then it, I won't look so old. Uh, it just yeah. didn't work. It just well, work. she was the lead in, uh, or the female lead in uh, Footloose. Footloose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, I'm not saying that she she just wasn't good in this movie. That she's yeah. right. Better things. I mean, might have been the character, um, especially compared oh, to like the man Sarah with Connor. one red shoe too. That one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, compared to Sarah Connor, who's also yes. an ordinary person <laughs> who gets yanked yeah. into this thing, but Sarah doesn't go moping and complain. I mean, you know, she's she's not resisting it. She's and in the end, she becomes a badass. Yeah. And I guess this character does as well. I mean, she does have a great moment at the end with dealing with the salt flats, which I thought was really great. Yeah, that was, good, was like that was that's cool. So she didn't do all that much though no. later on. No. no, and they should have done more with her because okay, yeah, they got this expert witch hunter and everything, but he's such a fish out of water. Um, you know, he's been thrown so many hundred years in the future. Everything should be baffling this guy, <laughs> and and so she should have been more helpful. But yeah, there Why she is. Oh my so god, long? she's she's decrepit. Oh, that was well, the first. That's like a good question, year. I guess. That was what, the first 20? twenty year age aging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. So, the, yeah, the nail thing is sort of a, I don't know. It's an idea, but it's hard to explain. <laughs> oh, but no. it's its known. It's, it's actually not, a thing that they believed. Like, that was real. People actually believed that if you did that, yeah. that you could hurt witches. I did so like, it's, it's, like, based on some real lore oh, yeah, yeah, that people. Good, the penny yeah, thing. Jeff, well, that's, love, like, a real. Wait, 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 wait. What are you, what are you talking about? The, the footprint thing, the nailing no, the no, footprint no. thing? No, no, no. I thought you were talking about the nails, oh. her nails. Oh, her nails. Well, why they got oh. so long. In Finger nails. Day. Finger nails, everybody. In 20 years, Durr. the nails would have been... Oh, they would have been like... Full How are you? They oh, been, yeah. yeah crazy. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't It doesn't make sense that they're doesn't so long because they should have been way longer. Any longer. And her hair would have been way longer, too. If you didn't cut your hair for that long, right. are you kidding me? Do you see yeah. mine's like down to my butt and it's been like a year? Yeah. So, well, the, yeah. So the male thing is just sort of one of those. And oh, hers just were prematurely cool. tanned. So, yeah. But now I do love the bit about the pennies in the mouth because I, I think it served mm. a couple of purposes. And one of the purposes is, is that with the pennies in her mouth, <clears throat> she couldn't really move that her mouth that much and make maybe make the appliance more apparent than it was the fake yeah. jowls maybe, and shit yeah. and everything. So that worked cool. And she still has bangs. Come on. Yeah, they never go out of style. No, like with the hair. I mean, why is the hair? Just the hair grew. The more. hair grew down yeah. faster, but but the, but not the bangs. bangs yeah. stayed the same. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. Exactly. You know. That's why I'm just. Um, I, little things like that bother me, though. It's it's like okay, if you're gonna think through it, yeah. think through it, and See, don't do it or don't do it. I would have kept her hair and her nails the same length. Right. Like, why bother adding all this other layer? It's like, easy for guys because if like we want to show that Chad fell asleep for twenty years, he just wakes up with a big bushy beard. What year is it? I have fallen asleep for twenty years uh, at a time or two. Yeah. But what's interesting the, about uh, it is there is is them trying to actually do the twenty years. It's not her skin could have just aged. That doesn't. She didn't yeah. actually live through that. I just sorry. Yeah. I'm like, mm, it's a problem for me. Well, this is definitely a, a three character 
movie. Oh, I loved mm-hmm. Richard. He was awesome. And he did a great job. And apparently they were originally thought to play opposite parts. He was going to oh, be wow. the warlock and uh, Julian Sams was going to be the the uh, warlock chaser. That know, would have been more the type, type of characters they played. But they, it's, they sort of reversed that a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Julian's always the bad guy. Yeah. So anyway, he's always the bad guy. He's always the bad. Yeah, guy. I, I think I think they probably cast it correctly here. Uh, no, I he's agree. He's a good I agree. bad guy. It was. Um. Yeah. He's he's. He has. Well, probably I think he has probably the most lines of anybody in this film. Doesn't he? Oh, sure, so, probably. He talks the most. the most memorable yeah. lines. And he's really he's good at throwing a, a wind vane. I mean, that is not easy. And he throws yeah. that like like a, yeah. like a whale. Yeah. Wind, wind vanes are heavy, people. Yeah. Wind vanes are heavy. They're not correctly balanced for throwing because that's not their function. So to be able to actually pick off a flying warlock at what looked like a fairly considerable distance, I, I Yeah, him. distance, but no speed. He's literally like, he's like this. Yeah. He's like. Yeah. <laughs> So slow. I was like, "Why?" Okay. Who has Better seen? Kid. You should eat more kids. Yeah. Who has seen with Nail and I? I have not. Not me. Not I hear it's a very good film. Yeah, it's like uh, Joseph Perry recommend. I think it's his favorite comedy or something, or one of his favorite films. And I, oh, it's on HBO Max. I might just have to watch that. Is it a horror movie? No, it's a comedy. Oh. Mm. But but he's in that. That's the reason I brought that up. Um, Does he play? And I nail keep or hearing. I? I never. It's one of those mm. things where I never heard about it before, and somebody mentions it to you, and then I start seeing it everywhere. Yeah, you know? right. Of course, yeah. So what's going on here, uh, Chad and Bill? A Loki TV series? Yes. What about it? Post production. That that Hmm. doesn't, and he's no Tom Hiddleston plays him. What is what is Richard? Yeah, I'm like Hiddleston Hiddleston plays Loki. Yeah, but Richard Grant is in it apparently. Cool. um, Well, well, that's Owen Wilson plays Mobius. Mobius. So, well, he's gonna he's gonna get famous from uh, Loki then because that's gonna be a big hit, I'm sure. Is that a Disney? Disney it's a Marvel, Plus, yeah. Mar- Disney Plus uh, Marvel movie, yeah, can't can't go wrong. I love. Logan. Okay. Any other comments about? I I thought he did a great job. I was. Yeah, yeah. I I don't have a single problem with him. He's great. Game, uh, Game of Thrones season six, Eisenbarra. Oh. Mm. Yeah, no, I thought he did a good job. I wish the script had given him. I think they lost, they missed an opportunity for some good comedic bits with him being who he is in now in the modern times. I mean, what? Although he did say, "Why do you paint your face?" I'll oh, smack you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> there, was like, there, was a, there was a couple of things like getting on the airplane was one too. I think that. Yeah, yeah, getting on the airplane with this weapon is like, boy, these movies were so pre nine one one, you know. I was more oh, shocked yeah. when I saw somebody light a cigarette on the airplane. Oh yeah, yeah. <gasps> oh yeah, it's so weird. People, you know, kids today don't realize there was a time when, yeah, uh, you know, Uma Thurman could go on an well, airplane with a katana and nobody would even blink. They still have the ashtrays on some planes. Yeah, like you better not I'm put like, a cigarette. Like, oh, they haven't replaced the seats. That tells you. Yeah, I might yeah. not. I might not fly on a plane that still has seats from <laughs> thirty years ago. <laughs> I'm quite it, like the bigger ones. Totally. Ugh. Oh, oh I love her. Oh, Night of the Comet. Oh, Mar- my gosh. oh, Rock and Roll High School. I love Mary Warner. Eating I love it. too. She's always been one of my favorites. It's she's one of those ones. If I go like I go to a convention and she's there, and it makes me angry that there is not a line stretched around the block. That people oh, love like how do people Mary not Warner. know? Give her yeah, props. she's so talented. She's so talented. She's she's unusually attractive. She's very mm-hmm. intelligent. She usually plays smart characters because she's a very intelligent person in real life. I had a nice conversation with her at a convention once. If you've and, never seen uh, Eating Raul, you're missing out. Great movie. Oh, with Paul Martel. And yeah, she's just, she always brightens up 
You know, it's usually small parts, but she brightens up the mm -hmm. thing. And she had a great death that they cut out. So that, that picture on the bottom, her original death was that he would freeze her. Mm. And her eyes were actually on her breast. She pulls her shirt off and she's got eyes yes, where yes. Her nipples should be. Mm -hmm. And then he smashes her body and plucks the eyes out. Well, that sounds like probably the most expensive special effect in the film. But yeah. apparently audiences laughed instead of... Um, <laughs> well, why wouldn't they laugh? It's funny. Mm, it's, it's a, yeah, you know, come on. Yeah. It's... Mm -hmm. it's I think it's it's the kind of laughter you want in a horror movie when when characters are messing with people. They sh and nobody can find that footage. They've tried to find it because I know pictures of it were in Fangoria. Yeah, yeah. And then it just disappeared. No one's been able to find the footage, which is a shame. Because that would have been a very memorable what death. You were in. What was that? Oh. That made you know made an impression. What? Say, say what? One more time. what? You were cutting out. You were cutting out, Jeff. Yeah, we couldn't hear you. What movie uh, do you remember seeing her in? You know, what was the first time she made an impression that stuck in your mind? Probably Rock and Roll High School. Yeah. yeah. She played, for me, uh, it was Night of the Comet, for sure. Yeah. God, and oh, so many other things. I mean, I even saw some of the Warhol movies and things. She was she was like an underground actress. Mm -hmm. You know, she would just keep popping up. Oh, no, of course, oh um, Death Race 2000. Yeah, she was in a lot yes. of Corman, Corman films, too. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen that for ages. I she's really good. Like, yeah. she's really her. good. She's a mm -hmm. good actress. Right. Like, she's far too good for the stuff that she's done. Yeah. Shopping mall. Yes. Shopping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one mm -hmm. of the things I respect about her is that some of the movies she's in, I mean, nobody really cares if you if you act well in Shopping Mall. But she always right. brings her A game. She's got pride mm -hmm. in her craft. Yep. And that's that's what all actors should do. She was in the, uh, the House of the Devil. I don't know if you guys remember that from 2009, mm -hmm. the Ty West film. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. Tom, Tom, Tom Noonan, she was in that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I just, man, I just love, I love her to death. Yeah. I'll check that out again, too. Uh, she has a quote um, where she's talking about... Um, she thought she was going to be a star at one point. Let me pull it up here so I don't screw it up. She's a star in my eyes. Um, I don't know where I saw it because now I don't. Now I don't see it. I hate that. I hate that. Um, oh, once upon a time, I thought I would become a star. It took me six months to realize that wasn't going to happen. Eventually. I knew that I would never become a star, but I would make lots of films and I would earn little bits of money here and there, which would support me. So she does have a pretty good list. She credit. gave up on being a star after six months though. That's, that's, that's too quick. I, th I think, she, I think the thing is she has an unusual look yeah. and, and not, it's not the kind of thing that Hollywood's going to cast in leading roles. She she could always she'll always be welcome on indie sets and doing that character kind of thing. And I mean I get what she's saying, um, but you know what? Yeah. Character actors can can work till the day they die. Yeah. They they they're never the 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 first name up on the poster. But those people, when they when they when their career goes cold, it goes cold, and they yeah. may not get cast in anything for years to come. Whereas the character actors are doing. Da, 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 they're working mm -hmm. as as often as they wish. So, yep, something to be said for that. Yeah, because they have a look, you know. That, yeah. yeah, and they have a reputation of being good performers who show up, know their lines, do a good job, and enhance whatever film they're in. Eh, that's not a bad reputation to have. Nope. So, there's some special effects. There's the <laughs> there they are. Yeah. The uh, the effect at the bottom mm. was pretty good. You have to. I did like that. One. Yeah, and and I like the tongue too. In the beginning, oh, yeah, the when he, the tongue yeah, was the tongue cool. was yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But those were practical. I mean, so right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, again, I think if uh, if you if you don't have the ability to really pull off this, I mean, this is before CGI. I mean, nowadays, any kid with Adobe After Effects could do those top two pictures and probably do oh, yeah. better. 
Actually, yeah. I could do it without yeah. with using After Effects like two times to make right. two things. And you even could put some of the lighting. It's, it's a pain, but you can mm -hmm. you can you can improve. You can fix it. In so how did they do it they back do it. then? I mean, how did they do that? How did they add that? What they 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 just did cell animation. That like a, you know they somebody they. They like they drew on it or something. Oh yeah, this this is yeah, like they hand were, drawn. That's yeah, hand drawn, hand drawn on the film yeah. on the film cells. Yeah, that's actually a lot of that animated stuff. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah, I had I, no idea. I, I didn't like even it. really I, think about I it. I actually kind of like it because it, it just reminds me of like Forbidden Planet and stuff. It's it's mm. it's cool and smooth and but it doesn't it doesn't look real and it especially doesn't look real when you don't have the people trying to make the lighting and the lighting is what always gives it away. If you've got a handful of fire, your face should be, should be lit up, lit up like mm -hmm. there's a fire yeah. and there's things you can do to actually yeah. make that happen. Just shine a red light on their face and dangle some rags in front of it. And you get that flickering effect and everything. You can do that later, but I don't think that was done. No. Um, filmmakers, mm -hmm. filmmakers think the special effects people can do anything. And it's like they one they can't, and two it's a whole lot easier to do something when you're there and you can say things like, "Hey, let's not do this in front of a tree," because I've got to trace out every single thing in the background, and a tree has a lot of things to trace. You know, please just oh, yeah. film it next to a brick wall, or better yet, a white wall. Better yet, a green wall. You know, but. <laughs> If you're there, you can tell people that. I mean, it looks like, like, sorry, I keep getting up close because I'm like trying to look at, it looks like they literally just almost just scratched it. Like it's, yeah, it's kind of ghetto. Yeah, the top one, the, the yeah. gray out of the hand were kind of, yeah. It didn't look, it That's didn't look fun, so bad though. in That's the cool. movie, but when you look yeah. at a right. frame or a sure. still of it, I'm sure you. The fire right there actually looks okay. I mean, I, like yeah, I in his cool. hand. It's not too bad. I don't, I mean, if you had to color that, I, yeah, you know, whatever. But yeah, I, if, if that's the way they're going to do it, I all, I, to, I totally think that person, the person that's going to do it should absolutely be there. They could also help yeah. them with all the movements. Right. Like, sure, sure, sure. It's, it's you just, know. you know, I, and I don't mind the fact that it's unrealistic, especially in a supernatural movie where... Well, what should a, what should well, demon not really, fire yeah. look like? Maybe demon fire should look like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. I don't know. That's all right. Sure. <laughs> sure. Why not? Why not? I was going to ask Chad. What do you? What parts? What do you think uh, Carl Fullerton did on this? Was it the like, for instance, Mary Warrenoff? Probably. Probably. Probably a lot of the facial makeup effects and old age makeup. Uh -huh. Stuff like that, um, maybe, and because and I, I think we were discussing this beforehand, the difference between visual makeup effects and and what was the other, uh, just regular makeup effects. One of them was uh, special makeup effects artist, and the other one was visual makeup effects. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't know the difference unless there's some sort of. I know Tom Woodruff and those guys that came from Stan Winston's camp mm -hmm. did a lot of the of mechanical makeup effects like the pumpkin head suit you know the whole mm. that that kind of thing where there was mechanics involved in it okay you know in in the facial stuff and i think regular makeup effects carl fulton maybe so probably the the, the, eyes, the, uh, the, yeah. the eyes that yeah. would move around would be a yeah. mechanical yeah. effect that's what i'm thinking they just make up these credits as they go sometimes. Probably. <laughs> yeah i'm like well i think you're right okay. i think uh wasn't it ed martinez uh you know, they, what, what do you want to be billed as? What credit do you want? You know, mm. it's like, yeah, director of special yeah. effects. Sure. <laughs> um, and knowing some of those okay. guys, they probably wanted their work to stand out. So they, yeah, say, we'll call me this or call me that. Yeah. So, what, um, anything else we want to talk about on this film? I think we've about covered everything. Yeah. Crystal, anything you want to say that, you know, I don't know. You still have dreams? I think if you haven't seen it. <laughs> what, the, what the heck is that? Uh, I'm a grown woman now, Jeff. No, I'm just kidding. You don't, yeah. um, you don't have dreams? <laughs> no, now, no, they've gotten way of... worse. 
Jeez Louise, guys. I, I, like, I, I still, she, she I still says that about after, Donnie Darnell on the. Uh, she, Crystal says whatever. that after the beginning when she just kept going, Julian Sands. Oh. Julian Sands. Yeah, but I'm like, Julian I just Sands? remember, I said when I was a kid, I totally am over that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. He, okay. <laughs> He's married anyway. Hearing, hearing uh, no other comments other than, you know, I think it's a fun film and it's worth watching. It was on. Uh, uh, yeah. It was on. Uh, yeah, it, it was. yeah, that's it's what I was going to say. I was going to say, if you haven't seen it in a long time, you should totally watch it. And Jerry yeah. likes it. Jerry, who? Exactly. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Jerry Godzilla oh. versus Megalon Chandler. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, is, it is an entertaining movie. Uh, the story, yeah. the story carries the movie a lot. Where mm -hmm. yeah, it's failed by a few things, the visual effects and stuff like that. The story kind of carries it through a little bit. It's a great story, um, yeah. you know. And, and that's saying something about it. whenever there's you start it, it all starts with a good story. So totally. and, you, and, and you can have bad things in your movie or, or whatever, but if you've got a good story and somebody that knows how to tell the story effectively, you know, that's half the battle. That's half the battle. And it's, and I, I like the good versus evil aspect of it. We didn't mention the, the guy who plays the Mennonite farmer. I really like that character. This, yeah, this, yeah. He's just a regular yeah. farmer. He's just an ordinary guy, but he, he knows, knew. he, he knew. knows evil when it's around yeah. and he knows some of the tricks you can play. And uh, the scene where he starts bleeding from the eyes and everything, that was creepy. You yeah. know, I, I really felt bad because it, that character didn't have a whole lot to do but you you felt bad and i'm yeah. glad that they it, it also he was a nice enough guy a good enough person that it made sense for once that the hero who almost has the bad guy beat would stop what he's doing to try yeah. to save this good innocent man who yeah. you know was trying to help them out even though it lets the bad guy get away you understand mm -hmm. because yeah i try to help him too he's a good yeah. guy yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. it's I, I was very entertained by this, and I'm glad Crystal picked it because it was just not a film I, I I've scrolled by it a million times, yeah, and never felt the mm -hmm. need to watch it. So I'm glad that uh, I got a chance. So thank you, yeah. Crystal. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good pick. Yeah, I was gonna do Vampire's Kiss, but apparently they pulled it off of yeah. Prime or whatever. So well, I like this. Go. I like I like this one better. Really? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. All right, well, we don't I really have like Vampire's Kiss for a different rate. Really? We'll, back this episode, we'll keep an eye out for it. It'll well, Jerry out. did say something. Better. He told y'all not to pick on me. We don't listen to Jerry or I. Yeah. We didn't pick on you, did we? No, we pick on Jerry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what he really means. Well, except for, <laughs> except for maybe the... Uh... Jerry's living pre precariously hmm. through Crystal. So you know? next up... Next Please don't up pick on Crystal means Warlock from 1959. So, uh, oh my! He's just keep, he's gonna push it. He's such a pusher. He's like, come on, come on. We're gonna do. We're gonna. Yeah, you just never give up. Um, no, we're not. I actually thought about trying to do a Western podcast, but I decided. Ew! Ew! No. Uh, got the film noir, versus film Dracula. Noir Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter, and then what? I mean, what's left? I don't mind uh, Western horror. I do enjoy some Westerns. I like Western sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but I just don't like straight up Westerns. Yeah, Bone Tomahawk's one of my favorite movies. So. Uh, yes. It is. That's an incredible movie. Yeah. Um, so, I did like Young Guns. Does that count? W there's There are some great Westerns, and I <laughs> have a fondness for them because I grew yeah. up uh, sure. with watching when I was a dad. I mean... That's no excuse. In the fifties yeah. and the sixties, westerns were like, uh, yeah, forensic Everything. shows. Now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I that's, mean, that's yeah. Good there was uh, multiple on at every time slot. I think. Um, all right, so that's it for this two weeks. But every two weeks, we focus on a specific film release between nineteen eighty and nineteen eighty nine. Next up, we tackle one chosen by Jim Bob Warlock. Okay, what is it? What are we doing next? Madman, Madman Mars, not Madman. Uh, oh, I've never seen Mad that. Madman from 1981, yes. and that's that was a uh, a cropsy uh, take. Sort of, yeah, sort of. Uh, 
Legendary. All legendary. Right. This is better than the, the burning. I like it better than the burning. Okay. No, okay. 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 Um, so make sure you join us for that one. Uh, plenty of ways to stay in touch. We have like YouTube. Comment, like, mm -hmm. subscribe, subscribe. Alerts. Subscribe. subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You can also stay in touch right here. Just touch right here. That's where that's where what? it hurts. Yeah, just touch it. I am so confused right now. Yeah, oh, no. I have I'm no idea. Talk about where Brett like. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll or we will <laughs> follow you around and drive nails in your footsteps. I mean, oh, uh, your head, oh, your head. <laughs> so yeah, leave comments. Also, uh, just people want to check on. Uh, I'm so um, I'm so I'm so tired. The yeah. classic. The classic. <laughs> Uh, uh, our our sister podcast, Chad. You want to tell them about the what, what is that classic <laughs> sci-fi movie channel? That's <laughs> what have we become? That's how I, before we got here. <laughs> that's how I'm trying to remember what I was talking. About. <laughs> this is that's how the chick from Vacation stirred the Kool Aid. <laughs> Uh, we are coming up on our 100th episode of the Classic Era. The oh. 100th episode of DOH, the Classic Era. And oh, we're gonna, awesome. Yeah, we're going to be doing uh, Frankenstein. Oh, that's awesome. James Whale's Frankenstein for the Excellent. 100th episode. So, Good choice. Be on it's the right, next, right next to Chris. It's right over your left shoulder. And, 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 yeah. yep. We and are also partnering with the uh, Classic or the sci or classic sci-fi movie channel, uh, which is a streaming um, platform that you can get on all kinds of good stuff. I don't I don't have the list here, but like Fire TV, Roku, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Also on uh, from the website, and uh, they have got a ton of good stuff. So we are happy to be there. They're picking us up when we started the videos. So I think uh, episode ninety one to ninety four are up right now, and they'll be catching up as we move along. So we are excited about that. We are. Yay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we are. Plenty of ways <laughs> to stay in touch. All right. We already did that. Catch oh, us again boy. here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s. It's only decades of horror can do it. <sighs> Say goodnight, guys. Oh, Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs> Some magazine.